Let me get Mr. Hester to cross the line for me. I'm just going to go ahead and get the transponders that are on track taken care of. All right, so there's Mr. Hester. Brandon Hester. Uh, hold on, hold on. All right, so who's this that just crossed? All right. Mike Sunderland. All right, is Rob Isaac up here? Let's get Rob across the line for me. Rob Isaac. Rob Isaac. All right, who else is up here that I know? Let's get Mr. Henley to cross for me. Eddie Henley. All right, so the three I'm looking for will be Dave McEwen, Jason Rona, and Jason Santos. I think that's correct. There's Mr. Rona. Jason Rona. Hey, Mr. Cole, can I get you on that yellow cone for me instead, please? Thank you. Hey, everybody. Just got to get all the, the blower spots covered. Hopefully you guys can hear me. All right, Thank so the two I'm looking to check in. are Dave McEwen. Dave McEwen. There's Dave the McEwen. So just Jason Santos. There he is. He's working his way. Got 40 plus up right now. This is for 40 plus two wheel drive. Howdy. Not this one. All right, let's go to. All right, so we should be all good to go there. We'll let Lee get Mr. Rona finalized. All righty, we got some marshals. We got some drivers. Let's get Mr. Rona behind the line. All right, so. The way you'll be called off, it'll go Dave 1, Eddie 2, Jason 3, Chris 4, Rob 5, Brandon 6, and Mike 7. Uh, this is the first race we're calling off, so I'm going to make sure that we get everybody going before we have uh, car 1 come back around. So be on your toes and ready to go. So it'll be Dave McEwen on the tone. Dave Eddie. McEwen. Eddie Henley. Never mind. Jason Ruana, Chris Weishar, Rob Isaac, Brandon Hester, Mike Sunderland. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. That way I can do it all. all right. Everything should be set now. So we are looking for top three consecutive. Top three consecutive. First laps are through. Hot lap out of the gate will be Mr. Jason Rona with an 18.4. Backs it up with an 18.9. Working on one minute in. We'll see third laps coming momentarily. 
We'll see how everybody stacks up. So Dave will be the first one with three in. 101-5, Jason Rona, 56-0, Eddie Henley, 102-5. Brandon Hester, 59-6. Rob Isaac, 108-9. Chris Weishar, 110-6. And Mike Sunderland, 110-7. 18-3, gonna be the hot lap on track after the first couple of laps. That is set by Mr. Rona, who also is at the top of the board right now with a 55-9. Got an 18-9, 18-6, 18-3. Drops another 18-6 that time by 55-650 is going to be the pace you're looking to beat as we go to 3.05 left to go. time. Well, 18-3, then backs it up with an 18-8. 55-3, now going to be the pace. Picks up just a couple of tenths there. Hester going to be in the two of the 59.6. Dave McEwen, 59-7. Eddie, 102-1. Rob, 108-2. Chris, 110-3. And Mike, 110-6. Two minutes, 10 left to go. So we are in the back half of the race right now. Our race leader, Jason Rona, coming through the chicane, down the straightaway, in to the big step onto the tabletop, jumps Two all the way left. over it. Coming off that corner table, through the switchbacks, into, I don't even know what to call that yet. We'll call it, we'll, we'll just call it sketch double. That's what it is. It's a sketchy double. Down the straightaway, he comes once again, crossing that stripe, 18-1, backs it, 18-4, 55-3, still going to be the pace. Another solid one here, could drop his time down some more, but he is already in the lead, with a 55.3. 59-6 for Hester, McEwen with a 59-7, Henley a 102-1, Sunderland a 107-5, Isaac 107-6, and Weishar 110-3. Our race leader is that white, yellow, and blue. Work his way through that chicane once again. Back down the stripe he goes. One minute left. One minute left to go. Race number two, you should be going through tech. Race number two, you should be going through tech. Those of you in stock, make sure your Speedo is in blinky mode. Doing okay down there, Mr. Hardison? Getting all those blinkies in? 30 seconds left, 30 seconds left. Rona, McEwen, Hester, Henley, Sunderland, Isaac, and Weishar. 20 seconds left. Up next will be the first heat of 17-5 Indy. Five seconds left on the clock. Keep driving until your name is called. Keep driving until your name is called. That is time on the clock. Everybody's still hot. Everybody's still hot. Dave McEwen done. Dave McEwen, you are done. Rob Isaac is still alive. Watch that tabletop on the left side. Watch that big table on the left side. All right. As you cross this time, you'll be Eddie done. Henley As you cross done. this time, you will be done. Brandon Hester done. Jason Ruana done. So as you cross, you will be done. Rob Isaac done. Looks like that is a race. The race is completed. All right, race number two, you can start making your way up to the driver's stand. Race number two, you can start making your way up to the driver's stand.
I'll let these guys finish up, and then we will open the track up, and I will take care of all of our unknown transponders. These guys all know what's up, doing a great job on their blowers. Oh, you should be good, Brock, for the uh, that purple gun, I think, is the last one. Thank you, sir. All right, track is open for you guys. Alden Just use Henley. caution as the marshals work their way out. Garrison the off, knows. so we are all good there. All right, Steve Pryor. Steve Pryor. There. David. David there. Jake alone. There's Jason. Jason Ranger. So I'm looking for Chris and Matthew. There's Chris. It looks like Chris Mueller. Uh, Matthew Blake will be my last one that I'm looking for. I know there's a couple guys in here that will not be making it until tomorrow that did already pay. Hey, guys, you don't have to blow again. Blow is already done. You don't have to blow again. You're good. All right. Do we have any Matthew Blake? Did you get Matthew Blake through tech at all, Mr. Hardison? No. Nope. All right. So then that must mean we are all set to go. All right, so your running order is going to go David, Alton, Gerasimos. Sweet. Jason, Steve, and Chris. Make sure it's not going to call out. All right, we've got, yep, in that four slot. Looks like I've got all of my martial positions covered, so we are all set to go here. So, David, you will go on the tone. Alton. Gerasimos. Jason. Steve. And Chris. All right, everybody is on clock. Let first laps come in here. This is heat one of two for two-wheel drive, 17.5 Indy Buggy. Also, for anybody run wondering, the only reason why I'm making sure the blowers don't do extra is just because I know on the red ones, the batteries aren't the greatest of batteries, so I just want to make sure they last as far as possible. They should last all 14 without any issues. They did last year, but I just want to err on the side of caution. That way we know we'll be all good. So, like I said, there shouldn't be any issue at all, but just for good policy. All right, David will be the first one with three in, 102 flat. Gerasimos, 107.6. Steve, 105.9. Chris, 106.5. David by again for lap number four, 102 flat. Jason by 127.4. Looking for Alton to complete his third lap. That should be him camera. coming by now, 143.1. So everybody camera. does officially have three laps in the books. David going to be on that top slot with a 102 flat. This is our first race, 17.5 today. One more heat after this. So these guys looking to set the pace for the next heat coming up. And then this is going to seed you for your qualifiers tomorrow. Two minutes, 40 seconds left to go, 2.40 to go. Chris on top with a 101 flat. David, 102.0. Gerasimos, 105.7. Steve, 105.7 as well. Just four hundredths separating those two. Jason, 117.6. Alton, 127.2. Race number three, you should be making your way to Tech. Race three should be making their way through Tech. And at the bottom of the stairs, waiting to come on for their race. 2-10, 2-10. Also, guys, just to go over it once again, we are having a clinic at the conclusion of seating. 
Two minutes left. That will be on track. So that will be, again, at the conclusion of seating for anybody who is interested in coming and hanging out, getting a little insider knowledge. Minute 40 to go. Minute 40 to go. Race three should be through tech and at the staircase. Just don't enter the driver's stand, of course. We don't want to distract the drivers that are on track. Minute 20 to go. Minute 20 to go. That was cool. One minute left. One more minute to go, which means we are in the closing stages of opportunity to get that top seed going into qualifiers tomorrow. 40 seconds on the clock. 40 seconds on the clock. Watch the uh, sketch double, guys. Watch the sketch double. All right. Looks like that is clear. Watch the left hand step on. Left hand step on. Marshall is there. He is at the wood wall. So stay to the right of that. Stay to the right of it. Marshall's still there. Marshall is still there. Still there. Still there. All right. You should be good to cross down, Mike. All right, that left-hand side is officially clear of Marshalls. And that is time on the clock. Keep driving until your name is called. Keep driving until your name is called. David J. Cologne, David, done. you are done. Jason Ranger, done. Jason, you are done. Steve Pryor, done. Steve is done. Chris, you are still alive. Chris is still alive if you'd like to keep going. And then everybody should be done this time by. Everybody should be done this time by. Those of you on blower spots, make sure you get done. that taken care of. Alton Henley done. One more to finish up. One more to finish. We do still have a live car. One more to finish. It's coming down the stripe now. And Chris that Mueller is done. a race. Let's get our, our drivers blowers. Are finished. Remember, one to two, two to three. Completed. Rob, I do need you to do your blower now. Five to one, please. And then Chris Weishar. Chris Weishar, I need you to do your blower from one to two. Remember, guys, if you pick a blower spot, make sure you go from one spot to the next. We all want to have a nice, clean track to race on, so please be courteous to your fellow racers. So you'll go one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to one. So Brandon, Brandon, you'll you'll go from that spot to five. Yeah. So drop the blower there at the five spot. Thank you, sir. So you'll drop the blower at the spot you end at. Always a little bit of confusion when we first start doing the blowers. We'll be, we'll be good as we go into tomorrow. I know it's not something that's super duper common at like club level stuff. So you're not from, if you're not used to doing the big race stuff, you just, you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. So I can't blame you guys for that. So we did have six guys in that last race. So I should have just about all of my spots covered. All righty. Do, 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 do. Um, Chris, if I get you at that corner spot for me, that way that blower can get taken care of. And I think that covers everything. So track's open, guys. Track is open. Get a warm-up lap in, and then we'll do transponders next lap by. Joe Eastridge. Nolan Hunt. Although it looks like I've got some that are just coming up easy for Dwayne me. Pryor. So I got... Dwayne Dunn, easy. There's Eric. Eric. There's Rick Tossavinen. There's Mr. Merchant. Jermaine Merchant. 
and Mr. Santos. Jason Santos. All right, sweet. That's easy enough. Let's go ahead, close the stripe, close the stripe. No more laps, no more laps. Caution on the straightaway, caution on the straightaway. So your running order will be as follows. It's going to go Dwayne, Eric, Nolan, Rick, Joe, Jermaine, and Jason. So let me get everybody bunched up here at the front between the two and the four. Uh, Dwayne, I will need you to back up a little bit so you don't jump the line. The line can be a little bit sensitive from time to time. All right. Looks like we should be good to go. So, again, it's going to go Dwayne, Eric, Nolan, Rick, Joe, Jermaine, and Jason. I've got Marshall spots covered, so we are all set to go. So, Dwayne on the tone, you will be live. We'll let him get a sec. Eric. Nolan. Rick. Joe. Jermaine and Jason. All right. So I think I've got a, uh, I might have had a couple races go through. I've got a general idea about how long it takes for cars to come through. So in the following races, spacing should be pretty solid. I do, I do want to maximize it as much as possible. That way you have as little chance for traffic we want everybody to have the best opportunity, of course, to see it as best as possible. Alrighty, as we get our first few laps in, we're going to have Nolan at the top of the board for this race, 105.4, Eric Pryor, 107.9, Jason, 109.7, Rick, 110.3, Joe, 110.5, Jermaine, 118.6, and then Dwayne, 159.7. For some reason, my estimated position is not showing me based on top three. I'll mess with that in just a moment. We'll get this race going through. Two minutes, 15 seconds left on the board here. Going to have Nolan Hunt with that 105.4. Eric, 106 flat. Jason, 109.7. Rick, 110.3. Joe, 110.5. Jermaine, 114.9. And Dwayne, 155. Two minutes left. Two. Right now, top of the board is going to be a 58.6. Oh, watch the uh, left hand step on table. Left hand step on table. Stay to the right of it. Stay to the right of it. Marshall is still there. Marshall is still there. One minute, 35 seconds left to go. One minute, 10 left to go. Nolan, 105.4. TQ, though, is going to go to Chris Mueller at the moment with that 58.6. On One minute top left. Of the leaderboard.
30 seconds left to go, 30 seconds left to go. Race number four, you should be through tech. Race four should be through tech. And waiting just at the bottom of the staircase. Nolan going to be at the top of the heat three. Not on a top seed pace with that Transponder 105. Transponder to 129052. Eric, 106, Flat, Rick, 107, 1, Jason, 108, 8, Joe, 110, 5, but unfortunately out, Jermaine, 112, 7, Dwayne, 141, 6. Everybody still alive, everybody still alive. Keep driving until your name is called. Keep going, keep going. Everybody is still alive. Eric Pryor, done. Jermaine Merchant done. Rick Tossavin and done. As you cross Dwayne this time, you'll be done. done. As you cross the line this time, you will be done. Nolan Hunt done. Jason Xinto's done. And that is a All race. drivers are finished. Blowers, blow the to race your is next completed. cone. And then you'll drop your blower at that following cone. Dave McEwen. All right, switching over to 17.5 Expert here. We'll let our blowers get taken care of. Ryan Cottle, Josh Parrish. All right, looks like I've got my blowers. Brandon set Edwards. Down. What was that? Uh, anywhere that's open. Whatever works best. All right, so let's get that is Talon Henley. Talon. Here is Tyler, Tyler Hooks. Hooks. All right. Track is, open. Track is open, guys. Track is open. I did have seven cars start that. So I should have all cones covered without any issue. And then that is Mike Sunderland. Mike Sunderland. All right. Stripe is closed. Stripe is closed. No more laps. No more laps. Who am I missing? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven cones. All right, let me get Nolan Hunt to raise his hand. Nolan Hunt, all right. Eric Pryor. Where's Eric at? There's Eric. We got Rick out there. I got Jason out there. I need Joe Eastridge. That's who I'm missing. I need Joe Eastridge to Marshall at the blue cone in the center. Joe Eastridge to Marshall, blue cone center, please. There he is. Sweet. All right, we got marshals and drivers. Let me get everybody between the uh, the two and the four up here at the front. Let me get all these cars pulled up between the two and the four. Please and thank you. That way I can call everybody off nice and quick. That works. That's close enough. So it's going to go Jurassimos, Josh, Talon, Tyler, Brendan, Dave, Mike, and Ryan as your running order. So, Drosmos, you will go on the tone. Garasimos Kalos. Josh Parrish. Talon Henley. Tyler Hooks. Brandon Edwards. Dave McEwen. Javon. Mike Sunderland. Ryan Cottle. Nice. Yeah, each of the classes are uh, are set to do the auto announce. I caught it on the 17.5. I did get that one on the uh, the Indy. But we're all good. That actually spaced everybody out very well. So no issues there at all. So we're all good. 
We got five minutes of driving here. Looking for your best three laps in a row. And while that's coming in, I'll actually go and adjust the rest of classes to make sure that I don't have that issue I just had. There we go. All right, we are all set there now. So we are only missing one driver from this race, Javon B. I think he's gonna be in late tonight. So he'll just have to jump into qualifying tomorrow. But we do have the other eight drivers. It is gonna be Tyler Hooks in that number one slot. 57-1, Brendan Edwards, 57-8, Josh, one minute point four, Talon, one minute point nine, Dave, 101 flat, Gerasimos, 101.3, Ryan, 101.8, and Mike, 114.5. Mike, though, just dropped it down to 107.9, and he's looking to cut out a 25.5, so that should continue to drop as we go on. We do have live video going through mod, Matt Olson. I believe that should be Facebook, YouTube, and Live RC. Joe in the uh, front step. Tyler Hooks at the halfway mark. Gonna be your top driver. 57-1. Brendan, 57-8. Talon, one minute point two. Josh, one minute point four. Dave, one minute point seven. Gerasimos, 101-3. Ryan, 101-8. And Mike, 102-2. Talon Henley now going to drop to the top, jump to the top of the board. 56-1, a full second up on Tyler Hooks at the moment. Last three laps, 17-8, 19-9, 18-2. So he is at the top of the board right now. Tyler Hooks, his last lap was at 18-7, which was his fastest lap so far, although it looks like this one is going to be a long one, so he'll reset for his top three. We'll see what he ends up with over the course of the next three. Minute 40 to go, minute 40 to go. Race number five, you should be working either through tech or at the uh, staircase ready to come up. That is two-wheel drive mod buggy coming up next. One minute, 15 to go, one minute, 15 to go. Talon, Tyler, Brendan, Ryan, Josh, Dave, Gerasimos, and Mike One minute is left. your running order. 56-1 still going to be the time to beat by Talon Henley. A full second up on Mr. Tyler Hooks at the moment. Hooks looking like he's not able to respond just yet. Still 45 seconds left on the board, so he does have a chance. Let's find our race leader on track. I believe he is working through this chicane down the straightaway now into that step table. That is correct. That is our leader. Through the switchbacks he goes. Gonna be that yellow, green, blue, yellow wheels. Coming through the skips now into the table roller. That is your leader. Tyler Hook still gonna be in that number two slot. Tyler comes by with a 19 flat. So he's gonna need some pretty hot laps here, although only five seconds left on the board, so it looks like it is going to go to the favor of Talon for that top C. Time's expired on the clock. Keep on going till your name is called. Keep going until your name is Gale called. Is done. Talon Henley done. Watch after the table roller. Brendan Edwards done. Josh Parrish done. Mike Sunderland done. Dave McEwen done. Tyler Hooks done. All right. That will be just about a race here. Ryan Cott will be the last one to finish up. Oh, but he goes for a tumble. Those who are on the blowers, make sure you blow to the next spot. That is a race. The race is completed.
So make sure you go from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to one. You will drop the blower at the next location. So the blower that was at four should go to spot five. Get the track blown off. Oh, don't worry about in there, Rick. You're good. That's a spot that won't ever actually get touched. And if it does, it'll be because of a mistake. All right. Looks like our blowers are almost finished up here. I did have eight cars in that race, so I should have every cone filled up without any issue. All righty. I, I do have one open cone. We'll let these guys get their warm-up lap real quick. I do need that pink cone in the back right covered. Darius Royer. We all get to go. It looks like, oh, looks like Mr. Brandon Cottle's going to go get that. He waved his hand up at me. Dustin Evans. Brock Champlin. Give me just a sec. Cole Talliard. Donnie Ward. Jason yep. Ruana. What was that? Um, if, yeah, I mean, if he's going to crouch like that, then sure. All right, no more laps, guys. No more laps. We're around a chair out to the middle cone just for good policy. All righty. Oh, Darius Royer, you get to go off first. All right. Hey, Mr. Hardison, you want to run one more out to Tyler? All right, so the order is going to go Darius 1, Dustin 2, Jason 3, Lee 4, Brock 5, Donnie 6, Brennan 7, and Cole 8. So that will be your running order. Let's get everybody bunched up here. Oh, something's going down. All right, this looks good enough. Darius Royer, you will go on the tone. Dustin. Jason. Lee. Brock. Donnie. Brennan. And Cole. All right, it's a reasonable spacing. Track is definitely much faster than last year, so I've got much less opportunity to actually uh, get these guys going here. But we've got five minutes of driving to get top three consecutive laps, so that way you can seed yourself for qualifying tomorrow. For the classes that only have one heat, obviously you are just fighting for where you're starting tomorrow. So this is our two-wheel drive modified buggy division here. Got our fast guys on track. Third laps should be coming in shortly, and there it is. Dustin Evans, 52-8, 17-3 hot lap. Jason Rona, 56-1. Brock Champlin, 54-6. Lee Setzer, 57-6. 107-3 for Darius Royer. Cole Toller, 54-7. Dustin Evans back by there, didn't improve. 59-4 for Schimmel. 104.5 for Ward, and Royer going to be at that 107.3. Top of the leaderboard, though, is going to be Dustin Evans, 57.8. Lee Setzer in the two, 53.3. Champlin, 54.6. Toller, 54.7. Rona, 56.1. Schimmel, 58.9. Ward, 104.5. Royer, 107.3. Top of the leaderboard now going to switch over to Brock Champlin in the Schumacher. He's headed over that sketchy double. Around the carousel into the skips. Oh, another change there. Dawson Evans to the top of the board. 52-6, 17 flat. That is the hot lap so far. Brock Champlin, though, he's not going to let him have it that easy. He's going to go 52-2 with a 17-1 on that last lap. 
Two minutes, 55 seconds left to go. Race leader working his way over the table roller, over that single. Skies it just a little bit to that chicane. Dustin Evans in the two will find him on track. He is working in the center all by himself, the best place to be working through the chicane. Number three to be Lee Setzer. He's working into the sketch double now. Brock Champlin, 52 flat. That is going to be the pace at the moment for top seed as he comes over that stripe. 17-6 last time by. Let's find Evans. He's coming in through the chicane now, coming across the line. We'll see what he runs. 17 flat again. And with that open track ahead of him, he's going to have a great opportunity here to retake that top seed. Champlin by 17-2. Evans now through the chicane. Two minutes left to go. Crosses the strike. Two minutes left. 17-8. Not quite as heating at that, as that 17 flat. But one more heater here could potentially set him on to the top of the board. Minute 50 to go. Champlin a long lap there, so he'll be starting fresh this time. Evans by 52-1. Ran a 17-2, so not enough to take over that top slot. So it is the Schumacher of Champlin that is going to be resting on top of the leaderboard at the moment. Minute and a half to go, minute and a half to go. Through that sketch, he goes round the carousel into the skips. Table roller over that single through that chicane now, down the stripe. 17-5. Still haven't seen a 16-9 out of the two-wheel drive here in these first four minutes. Very close, 17-0-2-0. One minute, two left to go. One minute left. Looks like these laps not quite super heaters as the previous ones. We'll see if they finish up with some fast ones with 45 seconds left to go. Seventeen one. they're out of Champlin. He's coming through that sketch double round the carousel. Crests over it very nicely through the skips over that table roller into the chicane and down the stripe once again. 17 1 backs it with a 17 2, 52 07 5. Working through the switchback now. Around that carousel is coming up on some traffic. Hopefully, he can make it through without any issue whatsoever. Gets around that slightly spun car down the straightaway once again. Smooth, what's it gonna be? 17-7 does not improve again that time by. Time has expired on the clock. Keep driving until your name's called. Keep driving until your name is called. Dustin Evans done. Lee Setzer done. Brock Champlin done. Darius Royer done. Brennan Schimmel done. Jason Ruana done. One more done. to finish, one more to finish. And, and that is the race. Done. So it is going to be Brock Champlin, who top seeds the race is your two-wheel drive modified buggy class. Looks like all of our blowers doing a great job getting straight out to get it taken care of. Tool Drive Stadium Truck, you can start working your way up on the driver's stand. Stadium Truck, you can start working your way up on the stand. I got lots of unknowns in this one, so do my best like I've been to get it checked in as quickly as possible without having to have everybody go across single file. Yes. Yeah, I will. I'll let you guys know. All right, we'll let our marshals work their way out. I did have an eight-car field, so every spot should be covered. All righty, we'll go ahead and open the track up in just a sec. All right, track's open, guys. Track's open. Get them checked in. 
Rick Blunt, Jason Rager, Brandon Edwards. So I do have one just straight up unknown. That one's Mr. Talon. Talon Henley. So we're looking for Matt, Sean, and Jason. Let's see if we get anything new this time by. No. All right, let's go ahead and set these guys behind the line. Is that Sean that just went by? All right. Sean Redman. And then I got a transponder for Jason. Jason so the only one I don't Sintos. have is going to be Matt Olson. So let me get Matt across the line. All right, I do not have a check on that one, <clears throat> but I will go ahead and I'll do a hand count. Okay. All right, so it's going to go Talon, Matt, and then it's going to go Jason, Brendan, Rick, Jason, and then Sean is going to round out the field. Oh, there are two Jasons. So Jason R., you will be the first one. Jason C. will be the second one. I'll make sure uh, to do my best to specify that. So it looks like we are all set to go. It is going to be Talon on the tone. Matt. Oh. Jason R. Brendan. Rick. And Jason C. All right. So everybody is off and rolling, and I'm going to do my best to make sure that I hand count Matt as best of my ability. Oh, watch that uh, left step tabletop. And watch coming out of the switch back into the sketch double. Four minutes, ten seconds left on the clock. Lots and lots of time. Let a few laps come in. We'll see how we work out. Should be seeing third laps in just a moment. Looks like tally my first three in. Alrighty, so it's going to be Brennan Edwards on top, 59-1. Rick Blunt, 105-7 in the two. Talon Henley, 109-1 in the three. Watch coming into that step table. All right, that's clear. Three minutes left to go on this one. Brendan Edwards on top, 58-2. Talon, 103-0. Rick, 105-7. Jason, 114-1. Jason R, 127-5. Matt Olson, 138-4. Sean Redman, 142-9. That is your running order at the moment. And paces, 237 to go just at that halfway mark now. Brendan Edwards, 18-9 last time by. Now Talon Henley, 57-9, 18-6 last lap. That is going to be the top of the leaderboard there. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. Talon Henley, 18-3, continuing to drop that pace as he works his way through the switchbacks now. Two minutes two left. Minutes, two minutes. Talon, Brendan, Rick, Matt, Jason, Jason R, and Sean is your running order. That was our race leader. Now working his way through the switchbacks. Minute 30 to go, minute 30 to go. 
Talon, 55-4. Brendan, 57-9. Rick, 105-7. Matt, 105-8. Jason C, 112-1. Jason R, 112, or sorry, 121-3. Sean, 142-9. Matt Olson gonna jump into the number three slot there with a 104-2, 21-5 last lap. One minute, five to go, one minute, five to go. Up next will be our first heat of Indy 13-5. One minute left. Five. Forty-five seconds left to go, 45 to go. <clears throat> Watch the uh, step on table, step table, step table. Marshals are there, marshals are there. 30 seconds left, 30 seconds. <laughs> 10 to go, 10 to go. Race seven should definitely be through tech as of now, because that is time on the board. Keep driving until your name's called. Keep driving until your name is called. Talon Henley done. Matt Olson done. And then Mr. Donnie, if you need Jason a refresher Ranger at all done. on the tech, Mr. Harbson's over here. He can go over everything just Rick to double Blunt check done. with you. Jason Xinto's done. Uh, and that'll be race nine, so you still got a couple races. Oh, we got a downed car in the middle there. Couple more cars to go. Brendan and Sean are the two I'm looking for to cross. Looks like Sean that done. is a race. All right, race number seven. You can start working their way up. The race is completed. Let me get all those guys out to Marshall for me. Let's get all those guys out to Marshall for me. Lots of unknowns here. Seems to be a common theme, I guess. So, for guys, make sure you blow to the next cone. Make sure you blow to the next cone. Yes, the track's open. <laughs> Joe Eastridge. All right, I believe the Eddie Henley is going to be Alton. Alton Henley. Rick Toss Fainan. Rick Toss Avenin. Chris, Chris Weishart. Weishar. Dwayne, Dwayne Pryor. Pryor. And then Sean and Matthew aren't here. All right, let's go ahead and close the straightaway down. Let's close the straightaway down. Let's get all my marshals out there. Should have all seven spots covered. Should have all seven covered. Without any issue at all. So let's stop them on the straight. Stop between the two and the four. Between the two and the four. All right, so. Oh, I just got to check for a race. He's in the next one. We'll dismiss that. Audio is good. Alrighty, looks like I've got Marshall spots covered. So we're gonna go Dwayne one, Chris two, Joe three, Alton four, and Rick five. I've got five of my seven in this one. The other guys should be in tomorrow. So again, to be Dwayne on the one, and I will call the rest of you guys off. Looks like we're all set to go. Chris. Matthew. Oh, sorry, Joe. Forgot. Alton and Rick. All right, we're off and away. Thank you. 
Hey, Mr. Hardison, just as a heads up, for some reason it won't show me the, uh, it show me the result, but it won't show me the top three consecutive on the estimated position. So we'll have to get that adjusted. Although that'll only be a matter of for uh, seating. So we'll get that adjusted later. I don't know why. Especially because we're timing based off top three consecutive, so it should automatically default to show my estimated position as top three consecutive, but that would be too easy. All right, we're now Chris Weishar, 101.5, Joe Eastridge, 104.2, Alton, 106.3, Dwayne, 123, flat. And Rick, 113.3. That is the running order at the moment. If I change that, no, it's still not doing it for some reason. That's okay. Alrighty, so it's gonna be Joe Eastridge in that number one slot at the moment. 101.1, Chris Weishar, 101.5. Rick 106.2, Alton 106.3, Dwayne 113.7. This is race number seven on track. We are two minutes left to go. So race number eight, you should be in tech. Race eight should be in tech. And work on their way Two through. minutes left. Joe Eastridge going to be at the top of the board right now. 59.2, continuing to drive that time down to 19.4. Chris Weishar, 59.9. Rick Tossavainen. 105.6, Alton, 106.3, Dwayne, 113.7. That is my current running order and paces at the moment. For our first heat of 13.5 Indy four-wheel drive buggy, find our race leader on track. Working through the skips right now is going to be that silver and green. Now coming through the chicane, down the straightaway, crossing the stripe, crossing the line there. 59.2 still going to be the pace. Race number eight should be in tech or One through it left. at the moment. Watch the sketchy double. Watch the sketch double. Marshall is there. All right. We are all clear. 50 seconds left to go. Hey, Mr. Hardison, I sent you a message just as a heads up. 40 seconds left to go, 40 seconds left to go. Joe Eastridge, 59-2. Chris Weishar, 59-9. That's our leader going by there, 19-7 for his last lap. 30 seconds left to go. I don't see a, under settings, I don't see a, like an option for it. That is time, that is time as you cross. Keep going just in case you are still alive. Keep going just in case you are still alive. Your name will be called when you're done. Yeah, right here on the right. Alton Henry As you done. cross this time by, you'll be Chris done. As Weissmar you cross this done. time by, you'll be done. Dwayne Pryor done. So no more laps will need to be Rick made. Rick Tossovin and done. That is a race. Joe so it's going to be Joe done. Eastridge. All drivers are finished. Who's going to set our early pole position here. Those of you that have blowers, make sure you blow to the next blower spot. 
The race is completed. So I'll let you guys know when track is open. I'll let you know when track is open. So you guys, make sure you go to your next cone. All right, looks like those two are done. Our three here in the middle are finishing up. Let me get all of my marshals out there. I should have five, so my five marshals from that race will all go to a blower spot. So you will go to a blower spot because I only had five marshals. So need all my marshals to a blower spot. Those are all marked by painted numbers and arrows. So let's see, I got Mr. Eastridge out there. I got Mr. Weishar. Uh, Mr. Alton, Alton, can I get you at this middle blue cone five? And then let me get Dwayne at the uh, orange cone in the back there, just so we can make sure all of the blowers are covered. Alrighty, track is open, guys. Track is open. Joe Spiegel, David Allen, Bryce Holm Lund, Ray Sebaugh, Eric Pryor, Brandon Davis, Steve Pryor. All right, no more laps, no more laps, no more laps. All right, it looks like we're only missing one car. So we're all set to go. We're just missing Gerasimos, but I don't see an extra car out there. All right, so it's going to go Brandon, David, Bryce, Steve, Ray, Joe, and Eric. Seven cars. We'll have seven cars. All right, so Mr. Brandon Davis on the tone. David, Bryce, Bryce. Steve. Steve, Ray, Joe, Joe. And, Eric. and Eric, whenever you're ready. All right, everybody is hot. Everybody is hot. TQ right now, 59.2. So let these guys get some laps in. And then Mr. Donnie Ward, if you could start making your way to the tech, then Mr. Hardison will switch off with me, and then we'll have a nice flow here. So again, if I get Mr. Ward to the tech area, that way we can get that all sorted out. Love you, buddy. You're a great guy. Four minutes, four minutes. Brandon Davis going to be the first one in with 59-1. He is going to go to the top of the board there, Steve Pryor. Oh, well actually, we'll let these guys filter through, and now I'll, I'll start announcing. All right, I believe that is everybody through. So it's going to be Joe Spiegel, 56-3. Brandon Davis, 59-1. Steve Pryor, 1 minute point four. David Allen, 1 minute point five. Ray Seabaugh. 101 flat, Eric 101 five, Bryce 108 four. So Joe Spiegel is going to go to the top of the board with that 55 nine now. See if we can find him on track. He is working his way through the chicane, down the straightaway, crossing the stripe over that tabletop into that drop down switch back over the sketch double. He goes nice and smooth. 55 nine. That is the pace. Three minutes to go, three minutes to go. Uh -oh. 
Oh, well, that's not gone well. All better. Two minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock. Two minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock. Spiggle, 53-1, 17-6 last time by. Two minutes left. One minute, 50 seconds left to go. Joe Spiegel in that number one slot, 53-1. Spiggle 1, 53, 1, Davis 59, 1, Homeland 59, 7, Pryor 1 minute 1, Pryor, oh, there's two Priors. So we got switch up here. So it's Spigs 1, Brandon Davis 2, those times are the same. David Allen now 59, 2, Ray Seaball, he's going to jump up in the number 2 slot with a 58, 4. Bryce Holman 59, 7, Eric Pryor 1 minute point 1, Steve 1 minute point 4. So it is going to be Spigs on that top slot. Drops his hot lap, 17-3, but he tumbles. So that lap, unfortunately, not really going to get used for anything here. Fifty seconds left to go. Fifty seconds. Spiggle, Seabaugh, Allen, Davis, Homeland, Pryor, and Steve Pryor. Twenty seconds left to go. Twenty seconds left to go on the master clock. Remember, guys, keep on driving until your name is called, just in case you do get that extra lap in. Because you never know, that could be the lap that separates you from 15th to pole. So you always want to make sure you finish out strong. Five seconds left on the master. Five on the master. Keep going, keep going, keep Rice going. Home done. Bryce Brandon is the only Davis one done. done. Bryce is the only one done. Brandon David is done. done. Everybody will be done this Racy time by. Done. This time by, everybody will be done. All my marshals are on blower spots, so you guys know the drill. Make sure you blow to your next cone. Eric Pryor done. Steve Pryor done. And that Joe is Spiegel a done. race. That is a race. All, all drivers stop, all are stop. finished. The race is completed. All righty. So if you are marshalling at a blower, you need to blow from your spot to the next blower spot. Colby Seabaugh. Jason Rager. Mike Shirley. Wendell Rocketon. David Jake alone. All right, so I need marshals at least at the blower spots. All right, looks like I got marshals at the blower spots. 
So I'm looking for Marcus. Well, no, I think he's here. Nolan and Wade to check. Nolan and Wade to check. Nolan Hunt. So I got Nolan. Okay. Garasimos Galos. Oh, Schimmel is Wade. Oh, okay. Wade Pickett. All right, so we have everybody because Marcus Butler is not here. I got Marshalls. All right, Wade, Jason, Mike, David, Nolan, Wendell, Colby. I'm not even going to try to butcher that name. There we go. Everybody's on the track. Looking for some fast and consistent. Oh, well, if you're going to jump off, then it's a good thing to go ahead and jump into a marshal. Oh, that sketchy doubles catching a couple people getting started here. now all right everybody's got three laps in and Wade is leading us around at a 54.8 Wendell 55.9 David 56.4 Nolan 102 Colby 105 Mike 106 Jason 114 and we're just gonna call this fella G at 104.1 Ooh, the pipe is nasty. Nasty things happen with the pipe. So with three consecutive laps, you make a mistake, you just get past the line and get started again. You have plenty of time to get three consecutive laps with as laps as fast as what this track is putting down. Wade still hanging on to his 54.2. Wendell on a 55.9. David, 56.4. Watch the marshal. Two minutes left. Wade is quite the fast driver at 17 fat, flat as a hot lap. That's, uh, that's definitely expert time right there. That's, that's, that's a stupid fast. Wade is actually now down to 53-1. Now he's down to a 52-6.
So David on a 56.4, G on a 58.4, Colby on a 59.5, Nolan still hanging on to his 102, Mike Shirley 103, and Jason 106. That is the master clock. Keep driving until your name is called. Jason Ranger Dunn. David Jankalone Dunn. Right, you will be done as Mike you cross Shirley the Dunn. line. You will be done Wayne Pickett as Dunn. you cross the line now. Nolan Hunt Dunn. Wendell Rocket and Dunn. Garrisimo Scaletto is done. Colby is the only one alive. Colby is the only Colby one alive. Done. That is All drivers race. are finished. The race is completed. So Wade with a blistering top consecutive three. Use the really cool box. Put your car in there and go out to Marshall. If you are marshalling, please blow off your zone. I think Green Cone Guy didn't do his... Zone. Josh Parrish. All right, who might be Eric Dunlow? Anybody with a transponder? Okay, so who should I? Okay, hold on. There's Rick Blunt. Let me get him. Rick Blunt. And there's Bryce. Bryce Holm Lund. Oh, Dave. Darius Royer. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Benny. Brendan Edwards. Oh, this is, okay. Eddie, Joe. Benny. All right, so you're Ray. So he's Ray. That's Ray. I don't have you in the list. Oh, Ryan, 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 Ryan. Okay, never mind. My bad, my bad. Joe Eastridge. Ryan Cottle. All right, so I'm still looking for Eddie and Brendan Edwards. Uh, there's Brendan. All right. Brendan Edwards. And there's Eddie. All right. Eddie Henley. Okay, so I got everybody. I got Marshall, 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 Marshall. I got all my Marshalls. I got all my cars. All right, we're going to go drive in. I'll call your name. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, my bad. I was thinking you guys were already doing it. We'll bring it on to the straight, right? On this by, on this time by, bring it on to the straight. Okay, I'll call your name, Brendan. Bryce, Josh, Josh Darius, Darius, Eddie, Joe, Joe Rick, Rick, 
Ryan. Brendan's first man by with three laps at 101. Josh and Darius right behind him, 103, 104. Eddie with a 104. Joe Eastrich with a 104. So we got some tight guys up here towards the top. Oh, Brendan dropping into the 59s now. Ryan at a one flat. Josh at 102.5, Darius 103.4, Eddie 104.2, Joe Eastridge 108.8. Oh, Josh now dropping down into that 59 category. One tenth of a second behind Brendan. That's gonna be a fun fight. Using the wall, stay in bounds. Thirteen five expert should be coming to tech. Two minutes to go. Oh man, down on the tabletop. Two minutes left. Watch the marshal on the tabletop. Yeah, that sketchy double, if you get it wrong, it's gonna throw you out wide. And we call the feature sketchy though. Transponder 6978973. Seven, Brendan Edwards down to the 58 now. Josh still on that 59.6. Ryan one minute flat. I think he dropped off a couple hundreds on that last pass. Eddie on a 102.8, Darius 103.1. One minute to go. One minute left. Still can get three laps in. Pretty dang close. Keep driving until your name is called. Brendan Edwards done. Bryce Holmlund done. 
Darius Royer done. Darius Royer did drop his time down to 1024. Eddie Henley done. You will be done, you will be done as you cross. You will be done as you cross. Ryan Cottle done. Rick Blunt done. Josh is the only one alive. Joe Josh done. is technically alive. Okay, we're going to call it a day. The race is completed. All right, please use the blowers if you were at a blower spot. Garrett's going first. Big dog Garrett. <laughs> Tyler Hooks. Jacob Hardison. Garrett Hawbaker. I got a Frank Howard in here. That's Mike. Mike Sunderland. All right, looks like everybody blew off their spots. Track should be open for a lap of... Looks like we need a man either on the green, uh, on the white cone. Talon Henley. All right, so we got everybody checked. So let's line them up on the front grid. As soon as we get. Our man around here. All right, so we got marshals, we got drivers. Here we go. I'll call your name. Garrett, Jacob, Talon, Mike, Tyler. So our first class of fast 13-5 guys. We have another heat of them coming up. Heat number 12. Everybody's got at least three laps in. Jacob Hardison leading us around at 50.4. Tyler Hulks at a 51.2. Garrett at a 51.7. Talon at a 53.8. And a Mike Sutherland at a 57.6. So everybody's sub one. Three minutes to go. Oh. 
Allen up to 50.7 on that last pass. We're halfway through. Our leader, the Orange Buggy, over the sketchy double. Tyler and Talon running together there, out to the back. Two minutes left. Tyler Hooks leading on the fastest lap at 16.545. But he hasn't quite been able to put three of those together yet, but if he does, it'll be magic. Consistency wins races there. One minute 12 to go. Transponder 6232105. One minute left. down to the last 15 seconds. I don't think anybody is in a position to improve at this juncture. Garrett Hawbaker done. Talon Henley done. Jacob Hardison done. Tyler Hooks All right, done. So as it stands, Jacob Hardison seeds out one at 50.4 and Talon right behind him at 50.7. Mike Sunderland done. All drivers oh, are finished. So I mean, that's a tight group at the top. Super tight. The race is completed. Let the blower guys do their thing. All the way to the end, buddy. See that chicane, though. Feels good to you. So if you were in the last race, yeah, that's fine. So I will need my marshals on blower spots this time. So if you don't have a blower, please go to a spot that does. Uh, could somebody bring batteries from the shop for the blowers so we can Swap them out. All right, let's go ahead and we only have two guys, three guys. Ryan Cottle. What's happening, guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Getting this 13.5 four-wheel drive buggy. Dialed in out here. We're out here at Adrenaline RC Raceway. 
trying to figure out this track overall. Track's a little loose, a little looser than we're used to. Well, you guys are doing well, but there's some heavy hitters this weekend. We should see four-wheel drive mod coming up after this, but we're getting everything dialed in. We had the uh, the travel day from all heck uh, yesterday, but uh, we're here. We're set up. We'll get some more camera angles going and everything like that for tomorrow's qualifying and main events. We were able to get this up and going for you guys to follow it up. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the live feed. Thank you to J Concepts for bringing us out once again to their awesome INS and NCTS series. We were here at Adrenaline RC Racing last year and decided to come back this year again. It's a very unique track. It, as you can see, it is uh, a cover, fully covered track. They race uh, eight scales in here as well, so pretty pretty cool to get out of the elements. So hopefully you guys are doing well, and uh, we'll keep it uh, we'll keep it rocking over here. Thank you guys. Oops. I think this may have been Joe Fioka's very first lap. Everybody's got at least three laps in so far. Uh, Ryan is leading us around at the 54.5 mark. Jacob Allen at 55.1. Joe Fioka 57.5. And Josh at 101. So we still have three minutes and 15 seconds to improve our spots. Ooh, the sketchy double takes yet another victim. Okay. Okay. All right, Ryan holding on to a 54.5. Jacob Allen knocking on his door, on his door at 54.7. Joe Fioka 57.5 and Josh at 58.9. So everybody is sub one. Two minutes left. Ooh, Ryan does improve by a couple hundredths of a second on that last pass. He's at 54.427 now. Josh improving now. He's at a 57.3 with that last pass. And also an 18 second lap. That was definitely quite the improvement. One minute. 
One minute left. Uh, Ryan also improving a smidge down a tenth to 54.1. Josh now on a 54.2. So he's improved. Jacob Allen on a 54.7. Joe on a 57.5. Joe Fiuk is now on the 56.5. Keep driving until your name is called. Oh, Joe Fioka now down to 55-5. Jacob Allen done. And everybody will be done when they hit the line. Everybody will be done when they cross. So full drive. Ryan Paddle done. Is up next. Josh Parrish done. Joe Fioka done. All, All drivers are finished. Taking back the mic. Transponder six transponder two zero six zero seven four one. All right, transponder two one four six six five eight. So I will need one volunteer marshal just because Javon Rob isn't Isaac. here yet. He'll be here tomorrow, Aaron so he'll be good Hall then. Only one marshal for tomorrow, or for this time. Not yet. Wait for marshals. All right, so Ryan will go to the blower. So if I could get one marshal to help me out on the uh, turn one, this Dave yellow McEwen. cone. Track's open, guys. Track's open. But if I get one person help me Joe out Spiegel. on that yellow cone, I'll only Darius need that Royer. for today. Just because, just because Javon, uh, unfortunately, didn't make it today. But he will be here tomorrow, so that'll just be a today thing. All right, stripe is closed. Stripe is closed. Thank you, Mr. Henley. I really appreciate it. All right, so we got five cars in this. It'll go Rob Isaac, Garrett Hallbaker, Darius Royer, Dave McEwen, and Joe Spiegel. And I'll make sure that you guys have plenty of space. Also, if somebody needs a uh, blower battery, uh, I can swap a blower out. There's a big blower sitting on the uh, on the metal grate on the uh, at the staircase. So if one does kink out, we do have a replacement. All right, we got some marshals, we got some drivers. Rob Isaac, Rob Isaac you will go on the tone. Hall Baker. Royer. Royer. McEwen. And Spiegel, and Spiegel whenever you're ready. This is our first heat for four-wheel drive modified buggy. With 10 cars, we did have to split it to a 5 and 5. I think 10 on this track would be a 
Little on the tight side for Mains. Mains will be a full 10 car field, but for qualifying, figured I might as well give you guys a little bit of open space. That way it's not super crowded while we have the opportunity. And we've got the time ultimately. So, all right. Second lap's coming through now, so we'll get paces in just a moment. Hall Baker, the fastest one out of the gate, 16 8, backs it with a 16 9. Then a 17 1, so a 51 0 is going to be the pace right now for Hall Baker. He's sitting on top. Rob Isaac and Darius Ruhr, they come by. Royer, 56 9. Isaac, 103 3. Spiegel comes by, 53 2. McEwen, 56 1. Three minutes, 40 seconds left to go. Slot, it slid right into that pocket. Three minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. 51-0 out of Hall Baker. Spiegel, 52-0. McEwen, 56-1. Royer, 56-2. Isaac, 57-5. That is the running order at the moment. Hot lap still going to go to Hall Baker to 16-8. Spiegel, though, did run a 16-9, but he backed it up with a 24-8, so that won't count for much at all in seating, unfortunately. Approaching the halfway mark right now. Got one more race to go after this, one more race to go after this, of which I think all those guys are probably already through tech. Race 14 should be in or through tech. Hall Baker on top, 51-0. Spiegel, Royer, McEwen, and Isaac, your running order at the moment in seating round number one. Also, just as a reminder, at the conclusion of seating, we will be uh, having a clinic on track. There will be a clinic on track. So anybody who is interested in that, that will happen at the conclusion of seating. So it'll be probably about 6, 6.15 if I had to guess. It's 5.45 now. Finalizing races should put us right at about 5.55, give or take. We'll give a couple minutes for the guys to get set up for the clinic. Two so minutes now. It will be very, very shortly after. Minute 55 to go. Minute 55 to go. Hall Baker, 51-0, still going to be on that top slot. Watch the uh, tabletop on the left, the step table on the left. All clear, all clear. Spiegel last time was a 17-2. Backs it with a 17-4. He's down to a 52-061. So he improved just marginally there. See if he can't take over a provisional pole. So far, though, Hallbaker doing a very, very good job out in front. He's run a 17 every single lap, with the exception of the couple 16s he ran. His last, his last set of laps here, last 10, have all been low 17s. So very, very solid drive there. One minute five to go. One minute five to go. Ah, uh, Spiegel, he gets it wrong. So with one minute left to go, he'll start a fresh three also. One minute so we'll see left. how these guys work out with one minute left to go. One minute to go. Forty-five to go. Forty-five to go. Hallbaker still gonna be our top guy. Spiegel though, seventeen won that time by. Thirty seconds left to go. Oh, but Spiegel backs it with an 18-2. That could soil that three there. Still going to have a heater on his last lap that could move him up potentially. We'll see how it goes. 15 seconds left, so make sure you keep on driving. Make sure you keep driving. Keep going until your name is called. That is time on the clock. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Still Darius alive, Royer still done. alive. Darius Royer is the only one done. Royer Rob is the Isaac only done. one done. Rob Isaac is done. As you cross the line done. this time by, you'll be finished. As you cross this time by, you will be finished. 
Joe Spiegel Transponder 261957. All drivers are finished. going to sit on provisional pole with a 51 0. The race is completed. They get those five guys out to Marshall. Remember, guys, if one of the blowers do die, I did just replace two batteries. If one dies, I've got a replacement, although this is the last blow it's going to have. So hopefully it lasts the uh, couple seconds it needs. So I will need all five of those guys out to Marshall uh, on the five blower spots. Obviously, it's the last race. We won't need to blow after this one. But the blower spots is a nice even spread around the entire track. All right, we got Hallbaker going out. We got Spiggle out there. I got Royer out there. So it looks like Spiggle's going to the orange on the left. Hallbaker's in the middle. We got Isaac on Lee the yellow. So I'll need McEwen and... Oh. I should have... Yeah, McEwen will be my last one over on the two, which will be the green cone. That will round out our marshals. You guys are free to take your warm-up laps. You're free to take your warm-up lap. Cole Talliard, Brennan Schimmel, Dustin Evans, Brock Champlin. All right. You guys are free to take one more one lap if you'd like, and then we'll stop on the grid next time by. So Schimmel should be my last one taking a lap here. You guys are welcome for one more. You are welcome for one more. Looks like Evans is content. So as soon as Schimmel gets back to the grid, we will go ahead and get started. It'll be Schimmel 1, Setzer 2, Tollard 3, Champlin 4, and Evans 5. All right. So also, since we're doing that clinic at the conclusion of seating, the track will be closed for that duration, just as a heads up. And then at the conclusion of that, we'll announce if uh, there's any open track after, just as a heads up. So no open practice until after the seating at least. So again, Schimmel, Setzer, Tollard, Champlin, Evans. We've got Marshalls. We've got us uh, some drivers. Schimmel on the tone. Setzer. Setzer. Tollard, Champlin, Champlin. And, Evans. and Evans, whenever you're ready. All right, there it is. Everybody's on clock. Got the man, man T-hooks up here getting some video. Dang, these guys coming out fast here. Fastest first lap out of the gate goes to Dustin Evans with a 16-2. I'll let these guys get their two, three laps in, and we will get an idea of how we're looking. Sixteen two nine six backs it with a 16-2-9-8. Matching lap times to the hundredth. All right, there's our first three in. Dustin Evans, 49 16-2-9-6, 16-2-9-8, and a 16-9-7-1. That is a solid, solid way to start. So it is going to be Dustin Evans in that top slot as he comes across the stripe there. Champlin in the two, 50.1. Setzer, 50.2. Schimmel, 50.5. Tollard, 50.6. Schimmel now, 49.8. So we got two drivers down to the 49s, three down to the 49s. Tollard, 49.7. Champlin, 49.8. So our top four guys all in the 49s right now. But 49.5 is going to be at the top of that board. Watch the end of the straightaway. End of the straightaway going into... End of the straightaway, guys. End of the straightaway. Three minutes, three minutes. Tollard now to the top of the board. 49-3. Evans, 49-4. Champlin, 49-6. Schimmel, 49-8. Setzer, 50.2. Hot lap now goes to Champlin, 16.282. 
So our top four guys all in those 49s at the moment. 49-3 for Tollard in that fresh TLR ride for 2023. Watch going into, oh, clear now, clear now. Two minutes, 25 seconds left to go. Race leader going to be that yellow and a little bit of blue scattered in there. Cole Tollard, Dustin Evans in the two. He's going to be that yellow, purple, and blue. Those guys working together, actually, through the uh, switchbacks here. Champlin going to be in that three. He's coming through the chicane. He's going to be that, uh, it's kind of greenish blue. We'll go with, we'll go with that, greenish blue. Two minutes left. Tollard in that number one slot. Still, Evans resets hot lap there, 16-2-7-3. So 16-2 seems to be the edge these guys are hitting at the moment. Setcher now, he drops down into the 49s, 49-9 as his top three consecutive. 49-1, though, for Dustin Evans as he comes by the line there. 16-5, 16-2, 16-2, another 16-2-9-8. So two identical lap times in this run for him. 16-1-9-2 for Champlin that time by. He could be at a play here for a top seed. He's coming through the skips over that table roller into the sky jump through the chicane. Down the straightaway he comes. One minute, 15 to go. Drops a 16-3, 49-1. Evans, though, he's down to a 48-8. 16-2, 16-3, 16-2. Let's see what Champlin can do. As he comes through that chicane for that third lap to lock it in. Down the straightaway he left. comes. It's going to be a 48-8-4-2. Misses it by two hundredths of a second right now. So it is still going to be Evans in that top slot. Champlin still has a play here with 45 seconds left to go. Two drivers in the 48s, and they both have 48-8s. Champlin by 16-1, 48-7. Now going to be the pace. 16-3, 16-3, 16-1. Champlin at the top of the leaderboard with 30 seconds left to go. It goes Champlin, Evans, Tollard, Schimmel, and Setzer. Two drivers in the 48s, very close together, but only one can come out on pole position. Right now, it is going to the favor of Brock Champlin in the Schumacher. Coming to that chicane once again. 10 seconds left to go. Keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. Everybody will still be hot as they cross the line. 16-3 last time there for Tollard. He has a 16-4 back for the 16-3. Tollard can make a play here. Still alive, Tollard. Still alive. Keep going. Keep going. Schimmel is the only one done. Schimmel is the only one done. Champlin another 16-1 that lap. Could improve on his top three. Tollard two 16-3s in a row. Cole Tollard done. As you cross the line, Rock you will Champlin be done. As you done. cross the line, you will be done. And another 16-1 out of Champlin, 48-6. And that is a race. So Champlin is going to take top spot with that 48-6. Evans, 48-8. Tollard, 49-1. Schimmel, 49-8. And Setzer, 49-9. That is a race. And that concludes The seeding. race is completed. Oh, you guys are good on the blowers. That concludes seeding, so you're good. If you guys want to actually bring the blowers and just set them on the uh, this metal table over here, and I'll get the batteries all taken care of. <coughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Tracks closed for practice. Tracks closed for practice of our clinic. We will determine based on time if the track will be open. So we will keep, so we will keep everybody posted on that. So it's 5.57 now. I would say that probably about 6.15 will be our clinic. 6.15 roughly. Also, I am gonna go ahead and start creating our qualifying round. I'm going to do my best to keep it the exact same order we just ran. Uh, I just got to make sure that I don't have any weird back-to-back -back issues. So assuming that there are no issues there, it should be the same order. Uh, I should have it all set up within the next half hour, and I will upload it onto LiveRC so everybody will get a heads up on uh, where they will be racing tomorrow for Q1. 
And I think uh, that concludes it. We'll see everybody at the clinic. Yeah, you might need to fill it up with air. Hey, guys. So I think they're going to have a clinic after this. I'm going to keep it live for you guys and uh, see if the clinic uh, pops open here and kind of a cool part of it. So thank you. All right, so just to let everybody know, I do have some back-to-back -back issues with running the exact same order. I will try to keep it as retained as possible, but I do want to make everybody aware that there will be some slight changes to the program uh, from the order we just ran purely because there will be some back-to-backs. I will do my very best to retain it as best as possible, but I do want to make everybody aware.
If I could get uh, Darius Royer to the booth, please. If I could get Darius Royer to the booth, please. Just Darius Royer. I think he's sitting right outside, so hopefully he can make his way in here. Yep, there he is. All right, so that concludes my one back-to-back. -back. So it is slightly different. So it's going to go Mod Buggy, 17.5 Indy, two-wheel drive Mod Buggy, then 17.5 Expert. So 17.5 Expert and two-wheel drive Mod will be flipped from what seating was. Then we'll go to 13.5 Indy, which is the same. And then the other change is that stadium truck and short course, the, the back half basically gets changed. Mod buggy, short course, stadium truck, and 13.5. So again, there is a slight change to how it's set up. Mod buggy, mod four wheel drive buggy, you are gonna be races 10 and 11 now. So you will be moved up, just as a heads up. And 13.5, you're gonna be moved back to 13 and 14. Uh, stadium truck is also pushed back. So this was the best way to do it without having a bunch of back-to-backs at all. So just keep that in mind. I did my best to make sure everybody had some space, but there's only so much I can really do. So I am going to go ahead and print out the lineup so it will be listed. All right. That's coming out now. So this will be for qualifying in the morning. This will be for qualifying in the morning. So doors open at 8. We'll start racing at 9. So race 1 will be at 9 a.m. And then I'll run inside real quick, get a confirmation on our clinic, and I will make that official announcement momentarily.
already. I've got confirmation from Mr. Rona. The clinic will be on track at 6.20. 6.20, that should be 10 minutes out. So 10 minutes out and we will do our clinic. All right, I want to make one more announcement. Uh, we do have a crawler comp that is going on over the weekend. So we'd like to ask that nobody goes over and messes with that course at all. Um, they have spent an okay amount of time prepping it for tomorrow. Um, you're all welcome to look at it, but please don't move any rocks or disrupt it in any way. Thank you very much.
All right, everybody, just a couple more minutes till we have our clinic out at the track. So if you are interested in participating in the clinic, that will be in just a few minutes. Let me see what the exact time is right now. It is 6.17, so three minutes out. We are three minutes out for the clinic presented by J Concepts out at the track. Heat sheets are being posted for tomorrow now. Heat sheets are being posted now. Hey guys, we're getting ready to start this little clinic. We're going to be doing a uh, track walk. So if you're interested in taking a track walk with uh, Lee and Jason and Brock, uh, head on out here to the track. We believe they're going to provide some fantastic insight. Cole Tollard's ready. So again, this is happening right about now. So head on over.
All right, check one, two. I think we want everybody to come close to us here. Lee wants to get a little closer in here. So a couple things we're going to do here is Lee's going to obviously walk us through this thing. We'll add some uh, input with uh, Tyler Hooks. We got some other pros over here. Brock Champlin, Dustin, Brandon Schimmel, and of course, Cole Tolland. We're going to kind of move it in so we don't have to use the mic. It's okay.
on the straightaway here. I, I definitely um, do agree with JT that you kind of are out of arc, and you can definitely see uh, you know, the groove of the track. Um, so we get to the straightaway. Uh, this track obviously flies that way, and then we're basically on the width of the track. It's super easy to get to the end of straightaway and way overcook it, and then you're basically ruining your whole next lap because you're going to miss the end of the straightaway. So it's almost like you can err on the side of caution on when to let off the gas and initiate the corner instead of kind of blasting through it and then like ruining a whole other lap. So that's the thing I've, I've personally been trying to work on is like I really want to like go really fast on the straightaway, but then I'll, you know, overcook the corner, do something dumb. So sometimes you can break even earlier than you really want to think that you can and then you can have a much better arc off the straightaway because the line is pretty narrow and it gets really dusty on the outside so. yeah i mean that's what i see is when you're doing this is you have the tendency to drive really hard into the straightaway but reality is you want to be in here somewhere with the car squared up for this big jump and if you're out here there's no traction there's all the dust there's all the rocks and, and you just don't want to be there at all. You want to be in here, um, I don't know, preferably probably in this area. Um, you know, if you're hot shot wherever Brock is, he's probably right here somewhere. But the reality is, I mean, you're probably going to be in here. And then that gives you a nice place. I mean, right here in the logo of this jump, um, this is probably the best place to hit it. The, the shape is nice. I mean, when you're looking at this thing, uh, the shape of the jump is really nice right here. It kind of falls off over here. So what ends up happening is if you're out here, the car falls off too. It's going to fall off the jump. You're going to hit the wood. So you kind of want to be in here with the car square to this thing so that it's going to jump as square as possible because otherwise you're too wide or you're too inside. It gets loose. You can't get back on the track. So all your drive is going to be right here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and... Uh, speaking on the drive part, I mean, you can see that the two, the edges of the jump, there's no, like, there's no tread marks. There's no, where you can see the chassis has been scraping, or you can see the groove. The groove is literally like, right here at the AR logo. It's That's it right there. So that also tells you that that is the preferred la line. That's the line that all the cars take. And uh, kind of going back to what Jason said about drive, that's going to give you the most pop, the most drive. You're going to have the most stability going up there where the car won't kind of break loose you know before you take off i mean we've all done it like the car you know breaks loose as you're going up the jump and then the thing like you know does a cartwheel and you know you got to try and save it in the air so yeah this is the preferred spot for sure this is right in the middle and if you actually look straight ahead you'll land in the middle of the group because if you're too far on the outside you kind of fall off even if you do make it you're in the dust you're kind of in the you know no man's land type area right where you you know you can kind of save the car, but you lose that momentum going into the rest of the track. So, yeah, you definitely want to be uh, right where the AR logo is, and, and you can definitely see that that's where most of the cars are going with the chassis scraping. It's kind of forming its own uh, kind of little kick uh, almost, right? It's kind of forming over time of us driving. It's, you know, taking its own shape as we drive over the track. So, um, and you know, one thing I'll say, too, is looking at this jump is um, – it, you know, if you're looking at obstacles, this is like what I would consider like a nicely built jump because everyone thinks that the car jumps because of this up here, but really it jumps with the transition and leading up to it. So if you don't have any on any of these tracks, carpet tracks are usually the worst when they, anybody that builds their carpet track first, they always build triangle. We call them Dorito jumps and the cars just hate them. But this is what this is why the cars jump so well is when you have these transitions, these big transitions at the bottom, and then it gradually tapers up and it rounds off the top. That's why they jump so nice, and that's what they try to recreate on a carpet track is trying to cut, you know, cut wood and everything else to make that transition nice. But that's why it feels so good when you drive through here and hit it right is because it has a nice transition to it and the car doesn't make any erratic movements. Yeah, I mean, you can also see, like, you know, where Jace was talking about that it doesn't lift off of the peak. There's no markings. Like, this right here is it. There's no markings at the peak, at the white line. There's nothing at the top. So the car is really not even touching the tip of the jump. It's all about the part before it. How smooth is the transition leading from flat 
to elevate its surface. That's really the most important part. Um, so, yeah, you definitely want to be in the middle here, and I think that's kind of super crucial to, to setting up a good next lap. Yeah, what we see a lot is uh, there's sometimes jumps will be made where they'll just, you know, they'll just cut a triangle into the ground, and especially an eight scale, and they'll try to hit it at 40 miles an hour and try to jump 40 feet. But all the car does is it, it just, you know, we call it donkey flip <laughs> is the old way we would say it. But, you know, and that's what happens. But but you, you can go much further, much smoother, much longer with that kind of transition. And then it feels right when you try to jump 30, 40 feet with a, with a buggy and you don't have any transition to the jump. It's just a mess. And you, a lot of breakage, a lot of possibilities for crashes. So that's why... Um, a lot of these things feel so nice to drive on is because they're built nice. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, uh, definitely this is probably a, a very good jump to model off of, of what you would want, you know, a takeoff to be, right? Uh, I mean, every time we hit this jump, like, the car basically does the same thing all the time in the air. You know, you take off, you hit the brake, you land at the end of the tabletop. It doesn't do anything funky, you know, unless you're, you know, hitting it from here, you know, maybe out there. But... If you hit it in the spot where the groove is, it does the same thing every lap. So, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely important that you kind of pay attention to uh, what spot of the jump that you're hitting it on. And it's actually kind of nice that the the adrenaline logos are on these jumps because it's actually where all the best spots to jump the jump are. So it's kind of gives you a little bit of a uh, kind of like a signal or uh, a reference point, yeah, to, to kind of put your car you're not kind of guessing you have something to look at so all right so we'll keep moving here i mean this is a this is a huge jump for a 10 scale track really i mean uh you know the fact that you know i'm sure 17 fives are jumping up here somewhere i don't know if they 17 five go all the way over this thing or no i think they're closer to this middle area here yeah and i mean this is a pretty monster jump for 10 scale but the transition there's a lot of width here there's a nice downside it really kind of allows you to even if you jump to here and you can drive off of it you know there's not just some big ledge here that you fall off of you know you kind of drive down it and if you're fortunate enough to be able to jump the whole thing you got a big range to work with you know you can you can work from here all the way probably down to here and you can kind of land in any of those areas and still have a nice landing and I think that's kind of the the, the nice part about having a dirt track is you can build this kind of a landing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, when you take off uh, from that jump and, you, you know, if you're running, um, you know, if, if you are lucky enough to have some power, you know, you have that grip, that acceleration, that drive out of the corner, and you do land here, uh, I mean, you definitely have a good bit of area to work with. I mean, even if you, even if you kind of landed on the flat a little bit, it's such a smooth transition down that it won't really buck the car. Like if it was a hard lip edge, right, uh, it would kind of buck the car. The rear would, it's, it was like if you, when you case that double, like the car bucks, it would kind of be in a similar uh, fashion that it would just kind of nosedive on itself. It would donkey flip basically. So, I mean, even if you landed somewhere right around here, you really don't honestly feel like the hard impact or you know that you kind of miss the downside but uh yeah definitely a smooth transition here which if you you know if you do hit the transition the downside uh you, you know you have so much more momentum that you're carrying into the the next feature of the track or the the corner tabletop or the elevation corner um but no super important that um that even if you don't downside you kind of land on the top that um you kind of are a little bit patient too right because uh, I can't tell you how many times that I've downsided this or whatever, and I've overshot the next corner because you're carrying, and it's going away from you too, which is always harder, right? Like usually jumps, tracks that are, jumps that are, you know, in front of you at a diagonal or sideways view, super easy to, to judge, right? You can kind of see where your car is going to land. It's a lot easier to, to judge speed, but when you're going away from you, it's way harder to kind of judge the momentum and the speed that you're carrying in the next corner so uh i think as we move on into that into the section over here that it's important to kind of when you do accelerate off this that you kind of are, are really patient and kind of understand that you cannot overdrive this corner you know it's kind of the same it's it's literally the same thing around the track you drive you drive too too deep into the corner 
and you're in the fluff. You're in the, the stuff that's blown from the groove onto the outside, the, the little rocks. and um, <laughs> You're into the little stuff. Uh, or the marbles, I, I guess, is a 10-scale term that a lot of people use. Uh, so you definitely don't want to overshoot this. Uh, you know, have a lot of bit of a lot of patience. Kind of like what Tyler mentioned at the end of the straightaway. You know, it's super easy to to overcook coming into here. It's, I mean, you know, I do it. I mean, the one thing that I see here that I started kind of fearing later on was, you you get so going so quick here is now this becomes almost a traction roll concern because you're you're coming off of this jump and for whatever reason this whole section to me has pretty good grip through here so so to me when you come in here and now and now you're starting to make that that right hander and and the car is, is turning this way so it's really easy to steer too much here or hit one of these little ruts that's in the track and then that's what, what makes the car want to kind of bicycle here and traction roll there's also a bump here you know so this is probably just as just as difficult because once you get up here you kind of have to watch the wheel depending how fast you're going especially in mod we jump the whole tabletop you're coming up here the car's going fast it wants to kind of get on the left side but then you have a bump here which i can see the, the four-wheel drive guys are we're kind of watching this a little bit because they're going even faster here and then they can you know they can kind of see this line that they're working with but you can feel this bump right here. Yeah, no, I mean, and including to that bump, on the very inside, um, there is kind of, it kind of tapers off, like, it's flat here, and then there's kind of like a little bit of a bumpy tapered off into the very inside, right where, where his two feet are. That's super important as well. I think if you can kind of go outside and kind of drive right in this line right here, and then arc it, I think it's way smoother because I've driven on that inside line, and it kind of upsets the car where you, you kind of almost can't keep that momentum going down. Like you're kind of holding on like, oh, wow, like, like it's kind of getting jittery or it's kind of the car's a little bit nervous. So I definitely think not staying super tight here, uh, but a little bit on the outside because, you know, if you drive on the inside, you do feel it. It's kind of like a little bit of a rough section. But this bump too, right? I mean, as the traction gets higher as we race through the weekend, I guarantee you that we're going to be, especially in full wheel, this is going to be a spot where you you hit it the car gets a little light and then it just flies over on its lid and you either hit the wall or fly off the track i mean um and it's and, and this is every track too like it's not uh kind of a one track thing i mean all the 10 scale tracks there's always something or you know the grip gets so high that the little imperfections in the track really matter when you're racing on slicks it's super edgy you know you have all this grip and you kind of you're almost a little bit on the nervous side, but um, yeah, you'll, you'll kind of see when the grip really comes up that this type of stuff that you probably didn't notice or you know, no one really notices the track was, was looser, this will start to play a factor in how, how your car feels or how you go through this section, you know, and it you know, could cost you a mistake, so. All right, so at this point, I'm already thinking about this double. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm already going, oh, here we go again. So are we going to jump the double? Are we going to roll the double? And, you know, and, and, and I think it's, to me, I, I don't, I feel like this is smooth to drive through. And then the next turn over here is really nice. But you're really kind of thinking about what you're going to do to me on the double over here. And, you know, I tried rolling it. You tried jumping it. As the traction comes up, it makes you, you get excited over here because you're like, wow, I got a lot of traction. I'm going to jump this thing. But then you really got to land it. That's the whole problem. Like I was, we were talking about coal earlier. I was like, well, if this was just straight, you could jump this thing every time. But you really got to land it and go the other direction. So the difficult part to me is what's going to happen over there. You know, to me here, track's pretty smooth. Car has pretty good grip. And, you know, it's really the biggest thing here is just getting if too close to this pipe because this stuff just sucks you right in so and when you're so far away from from the driver's stand at this point um you really need to give it a little space because it, you touch one of those little uh parts of this thing and the thing just turn the car just turns right into it so to me when you're driving with this kind of pipe you really have to give it a little bit of space that far away because um it take and then it takes forever to get marshaled so you gotta you gotta really watch this stuff and uh, give it a little space and then think about your double. Yeah, for sure. Um, you definitely don't want to be tight on here. Um, 
you know, one of the other points too is you can see that the groove of the track um, is outside a little bit, right? And part of that is that you you are so far away from the section of the track that it looks like you're right on the pipe. You're you're like, holy cow, I can't go any closer. But in reality, you're you're mid you're mid part of this. Like you still have a whole you know bunch of room left to go on the inside. But that's not the fastest way around the line or around the track because if you, you come in on the outside here, kind of allows you to carry so much more natural speed momentum into the switchback here section um, you don't have to break you know jab break the car get it to break loose to you know kind of rotate tighter on the 180 you can kind of let off a little bit let the car do its thing coming into the switchback here and like Jason said I, I think uh, the switchback actually in the beginning was probably one of the loosest parts of the track I think now that it's kind of actually got a really nice uh, groove and I actually think this part probably has some of the most traction on the track um, and it feels nice right it's smooth um, I think you can kind of carry your your momentum from this elevation here and it just feels nice um, so but at this point we are definitely thinking about the double like when we're in the switchback but the double is is a uh, is on your mind so I absolutely are suck at the double so we're going to give it to the guy that can actually do the jump every single time um actually dustin too because dustin's the one that freaking told me how to do this double yeah um but yeah yeah you know talking to talking to everybody here you know and watching i want to watch the four-wheel drive race and you know there's a trick to this thing but here you know this like we talked about this this part of the track is is amazing here nice and smooth uh keep your distance and you know what i could see is with with brock here in four-wheel drive in four-wheel drive you can kind of get away with murder because you got all the power you got the traction you got the control of the brakes you got the control of the steering and brock's kind of the whip master here so when he, you know he could come out here and follow the pipe and four-wheel take kind of the ideal line and kind of whip whip the car and get this this jump to to make to work here and you know i'm not doing that but that's that's how you know you get the top seed is you got to come through here you got to run the hero line get a little whip action and do the double um and to to what i thought dustin was doing dustin told me earlier when two-wheel drive he noticed that we talked about earlier that this this face of this jump isn't the same all the way across he noticed dustin noticed that where the logo is is really where the where the kick is in the jump, where the lift is, and he wanted to get over it. So what I saw him doing, even in four wheel, is he would try to come out here and even hit this logo spot to get the lift so he could kind of just onto the inside. And and I thought that that was working really well for him. Brock was taking the hero line, which I think is gonna benefit him overall as the traction keeps coming up, because he's gonna be able to drive that line, especially in four wheel. But I thought Dustin's line was nice because he could just kind of drop down not really put a lot into it and it still make the jump here yeah i mean obviously in four wheel you can get away with kind of just murdering it out of the corner just wide open but in two wheel drive i would say i'm more on dustin's side like through this is like the center of this jump um you can you can see it from here basically but it's just got a little bit more kick and then in practice i was actually going all the way outside because the way the jump is shaped the jump is shorter so yeah in four wheel drive you can get away with kind of just going through there scrubbing it carrying a lot of speed but in two-wheel drive um, it's pretty crucial to hit the main line but it's actually more crucial afterwards is to just don't touch the brakes so we were talking about that but like yeah you want to come through here steady kill you don't want to give it too much you don't want to break traction you just want to keep it going straight and then you just want to find your mark right where the logo is is right where your mark should be yeah, so, you know, Dustin can kind of explain to us what he does in two-wheel here. You know, he, he's got – it's kind of not the ideal scenario, but it's – what are, it's ideal is when you land. Yeah, that's – so, obviously, the grip's coming up now, which enables you to do kind of what Brock's doing, taking – because when I first got here, of course, I'm trying to follow the pipe and straight line it to the next pipe. And it's obviously challenging because then you're jumping the lip that's angled, so that's what throws the car, so you have to whip it. And all that and then when the grip's not super high and the car's not pointed straight it's really easy to spin out in that corner and two wheel and then i was finding that even in four wheel so i'm doing it in both classes just because i don't know i feel it's safe for me and i like doing it in both classes because yeah it might not be the fastest line from this corner to the face for sure 
but I'm thinking about the section as from this corner to say like the first roller. And if you can actually downside that double, get around the turn tight and the groove and through there, that's what's super fast. And obviously that's where I found out that coming out and around here and hitting, you can almost see it. It's like right in here, the jump has more lip. So you don't have to go so fast. When you take the line out here, you have to go really fast to clear the double. The car goes low, but then you're carrying so much speed landing it that especially in two wheel, you miss the turn and everything like that. Here, I'm able to actually go kind of easy and just blip it off this and the car goes higher. And then like Jason said, it kind of like floats down, not carrying as much speed so that I'm able to make that corner. And that's, I feel like I'm pretty good landing the double and then getting the good line through the corner. So I give up a little bit here, but I feel like it's to get through that section fast. Yeah, and you know, when you, when you land here, um, this is kind of like a blind spot for me. I'm even on the stand, I'm standing on the stand, but to me, you want to be here, you want to be here somewhere, but it's actually really hard to see that when your, your buggy's down here. So it's almost like where you can barely see the cab, that's kind of where you want to be. And, but like as Dustin's talking about, he's kind of dropping down and you know, Brock's kind of coming in here and he's already on the gas. When Brock's coming through here, he's got this thing whipped out here and he's like, I'm clear and he's already on the gas going this way. And you know, Dustin's a little bit safer and kind of dropping in here and he's like, I'm gonna be up on the nice inside and kind of be a little easier here, which I think is nice and safe. I, I, there's actually been times where I think it's like because not everyone drives so tight because like you're saying you can see it it's like there's been a few times I've actually hit it so tight where you think you're gonna hit the pipe and then you're like oh this is pretty ideal and you actually pick up the gas and it's loose because yeah. you're so far and you're actually yeah. inside of there's the no groove. traction here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like kind of like right in this spot where I'm standing right now arcing through here seems to have the most grip and hitting that and not getting the car upset and everything is a big where you can make a lot of lap time on this track. If you can land this double and get around this corner without counter steering, spinning out, it's gonna be a good lap. Yeah, I mean, what, you know, what happened to me early, or just even in general trying to jump this, is you just think clearing it so, so cool, and you're out here pretty soon. So you're like, you know, you're into this pipe, but you know, that's a pretty big difference, you know, but being out here compared to being over here. So, you know, Lee, you can talk about maybe just what you wanna do. What do, you, what do you want to do? Yeah, I, I want to go around this section like every lap, but uh, no, to be fair, I'm just, it just kind of my kryptonite uh, so far right now. I, I just really can't um, hit it that well. Um, you know, I, I get through it, but uh, you know, I, I watch, like Dustin was telling me earlier, he's like, you know, you kind of have to like hit that section, you know, that middle part of the jump where the AR logo is, that way it does kind of float. Um, and when you do hit that, you could definitely tell that you're in the right, like you hit it right, you hit it in the right line because it, it's tighter on the pipe, you're much more on the inside, the car feels much more uh, controllable, I would say. Um, but it's tough, I mean, it's, I mean, it's tough. I mean, I, I assure you that uh, in two wheel, in full wheel tomorrow, that we're probably gonna wreck here once, at least. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, when you say Jason, I mean it's it's gonna it's a tough section of the track. It's the farthest part away from you, uh, in the jumps. The yeah, it's the loosest too, right? I mean, I think for sure this corner is by far the loosest part. Like when you land, uh, you can't really get on the gas. You kind of have to let the car kind of settle in and kind of carry that momentum out. Um, but it, it's tough. The jump is tough. Uh, it's the farthest part away from you. It's the loosest. So there's a, a just a whole thing of things that are not feeling good as you're doing this section of the track. Um,
Yeah, I mean, uh, to talk about... <laughs> I didn't even see it. Yeah, so for me, uh, once I get through here uh, and clear this, I feel kind of home free uh, because you kind of lose your car over here a little bit. And to me, I'm thinking, all right, all I want to do is get to the landing off of this single because then I feel like the track's got good traction. It's got, you know, it, there's plenty of space to operate in. But clearing this to me is also really difficult because it's the same thing. If you hit this stuff, you know, the car hates these things and they'll turn right into it. They'll get caught underneath it. Uh, every, so it's like you, you really want to stay away from this part because now you're getting on the gas too, so you're going faster here. And uh, so you want to keep a little bit of distance, but you still want to get your angle right here. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to Brock, Brock about that when we get over here, but you want to get that angle right for that part. So you, you do want to be as close as you can here, but you don't want to get caught on this thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree. I, I, I mean, uh, the corrugated pipe is definitely not your friend um, you know you kind of want to keep a, a good distance between you know the wheels and your tires on, on the corrugated pipe right because all it takes is for you to hit one of the corrugated you know kind of ripples or whatever and you kind of feel the car like you hear that noise and you kind of feel it like start to kind of suck into the pipe and then before you know it you know we've we've all done the front of the car gets jammed in and you're like this way it happened in like 1.5 seconds so um you definitely want to leave a little bit of room uh, coming through here, definitely, uh, I definitely prefer kind of somewhere being, you know, kind of right around here. I don't like being too far on the inside of the pipe, right? You can kind of see that all the little rocks and the marbles on the track are kind of blown uh, to each end of the pipe. But I, my preferred line is kind of somewhere right here. Um, I don't know uh, if Brock has anything to, to mention on that. I mean, struggle just getting the entry into this right so you can't really see it but you can feel it when you walk over it there is a high spot if you bleed out too wide over this it sends you further out on the face of this jump and then not all faces of jumps are even like we explained earlier and so the way that this is curved it literally sends you towards the pipe so what i was struggling with was i would come in way too fast squeeze the trigger way too quick and then i bleed off this bump bleed off the face and then my entry to the next corner i was just facing straight towards the Rather than staying a little bit calmer coming out of the corner, pulling trigger, and then just coming through there straighter. You want to be probably like no further than, I would say, well, the face of the jump right here is basically where it kind of, the low spot begins. But you want to be within that range, and you don't want to go any wider than probably here. Because the way the bump is, like, you can go wider, obviously, but it just bleeds you out wider, and it doesn't set you up perfect for the rest of the section. So that was where I struggled, but... And to me, there's a feel for how far you're going to jump off of this, depending on what vehicle you're running, two-wheel or four-wheel. Uh, with four-wheel, it seems like you, the further you can jump, the car doesn't get upset. Uh, the more grip you get on the track, the two-wheel, you can start pushing the envelope and how far you're jumping off of this thing. But to me, you want to jump where the track is clean and has grip because you're really kind of setting up over here. Uh, you know, Brock talked about kind of adjusting here. You know, Lee talked about where where he likes to be but you know to me I like to land where the track is clean and I feel like I got a nice angle over here and that 
because you know the biggest thing is with the two wheel buggy is just keeping going straight forward bite keep going straight because when that thing lands and you get all out of shape and you start swapping around then it's just kind of a nightmare to drive but if you can keep that thing straight you can land nice in a clean area and it feels like it's got good grip then you're like to me you're home free in here yeah for sure um i i honestly think uh brock probably has the way better line through here um you know, like when I would watch him drive uh, towards later, uh, before, you know, seating, um, he kind of, you know, you can kind of tell that he was a lot more patient before entering, like, kind of coming out of that section of the track before, because I, I, I do it. You kind of want to get on the gas really hard because you think you're kind of, like, almost kind of free of, like, you know, any sort of, you know, weirdness on the track. But, yeah, there is a high spot there, and I've, you know, I've done it. Like, you hit that high spot. You hit here, and then your car is it just hits directly into the pipe before the second seat. So, uh, yeah, you kind of want to, like Brock said, just be really patient. Uh, I mean, something that uh, it's not easy, but uh, definitely around this track, with how uh, fast it is, but you know, kind of how challenging it is to put that perfect lap together, you know, to get that hot lap or to have that flawless lap uh, requires a lot of patience, especially. Now, you know, the grip's coming up a little bit more, but, you know, I think even if the grip does come up, uh, I think patience will actually be more involved, right, you know, because you'll find these little imperfections, they affect the car a little bit more now that you're on slicks, uh, or now that the grip is up and you're on slicks, but, uh, yeah, definitely, I kind of like what Brock touched on, being a little bit patient the second. You just want to be, like, you want to make every lap as easy as possible, like, less wheel inputs, essentially, like, just less overall input so when you come through here you're a little bit more patient you're able to just square this away like without having to land and turn that in itself just makes the last easier so that's the biggest thing going around the entire track is just making as little uh, extra movements as possible so but yeah and then also with this like what i was saying was the rolling speed is obviously important but scrubbing this it's not too dangerous to jump too far there's not enough power in any of our cars or hopefully not to jump that whole roller but when you send it off this roller, the way the car sucks to the track, it naturally will slow down a little bit as well. So you could use this particular logo while you can see it, which I'm sure you guys can fix it too if you wanted to. But yeah, we're okay. um, you can use this as a perfect gauge of what they're talking about. Because what these guys are like thinking about is there's a bump over there that's messing me up two corners later. And because like we're on this track that it has good grip, but it's not exceptional we are momentum racing especially in two wheel where you know you're trying to keep fluid motions like these guys have been talking about so you can kind of use this uh, logo as a gauge of like i've screwed up i need to back off or i can keep going like if you're to the left of it going into that next jump then you're probably in a bad spot yeah i would say you don't really want to be any further past like i wouldn't go any further past this like you want to be essentially outside Obviously, it won't be too outside in the marbles, but yeah, that's where you want to land. You want to land with an angle that sets you up for the next jump, which we'll talk about. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is this is the next difficult part of the whole thing is how you want to do this. And um, when I see when I see Brock, Dustin, all these guys, Lee, Cole, Tollard, when they're coming through here in four wheel drive, to me, they're cheating death a little bit here with this pipe. To me, um, and when I was watching over there, it's really amazing how how much they got the car over the top of this area over here and um i mean to me i'm way over here because i'm afraid of this but you know you know these guys are are uh you know you know yeah you're flirting with disaster here they had a jump like this here last year too that was very similar but um a situation where you kind of had to be over the pipe but that's for four wheel i don't think you're really doing this in two wheel as much you're giving it a lot more room because you know um, in four-wheel drive, you feel like you can do whatever you want with the steering and the throttle you can get out of it. But two-wheel, you're probably given a lot more cushion. And, um, you know, and this thing is kind of tricky here. So the landing part of this, to me, is uh, is critical because this is a little trickier than I, than I give it credit for when I look at it because you can't have the wheel turn too much to the left here because the car wants to flip here. So Yeah, yeah. something I wanted to, to point on... Um about this section is uh, for me personally I don't know how Brock Dustin or any one of those other guys take it but I, I'm sure they'll probably agree with me 
especially in full wheel, uh, a little bit in two wheel as well, but I definitely am not afraid to like kind of skim over the top of this pipe. And I let, I, I actually like to kind of land like here, like wouldn't you say Brock, right? To get the suspension, right? Because the suspension is compressed or it's, it's kind of getting you over and you don't have to hit any brakes. You're d in two-wheel, like, you're, we're still, like, sending it into the face of this table. Yeah, essentially, though. like, I don't touch the brake at all. I would say here until, and I don't even probably use the brakes on the downside of the jump. Yeah. Just allowing the car to kind of suck into the jump, put it where it needs to be, and just let the car just roll and do its thing. Um, so, yeah, I would say I don't touch the brakes until the middle of the over here until after that jump. But this through here, I'm just allowing the car to scrub the track. You're jumping into the transition. Yeah, that's that's so the happy yeah. spot. Is you jump into the transition, and then the car gets light. And the part where I'm talking about is you turn too much to the left. The car wants to flip over. But yeah. if, if you're doing it right, you're jumping into the transition kind of, and then you get that nice float over the top, where you you can turn into this. And like Brock said, he's not hitting the brakes. The car just will naturally turn pretty nice here when you're coming down the downside. But, you know, he's probably adding a little fancy driving to it here, too, to, to kind of get it to do what he wants. But but ultimately, this is a nice uh, floating section when you do it right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it definitely feels nice uh, when you hit it. And, you know, like, uh, you know, what we just touched on, it feels really good when you kind of send it perfectly on the inside. You kind of land right at about the transition and it floats right over right it, you kind of you kind of get that nice pop over nothing too crazy you're not you know jumping the crap out of this thing and you land perfectly right you land right at kind of where you want to land right at right at before the apex of the corner um i definitely agree with brock i'm definitely not hitting the brakes uh through here at all right you know if you do it right the car kind of naturally you keep that momentum going in you keep the momentum coming out um and it definitely feels nice. And you kind of know, for me, I say this a lot, but for me, you kind of know when you do the section of the track, right? Because it just feels correct. Like it feels like the car and everything was working properly and you hit the jump in the right spot uh, at the exact moment. It feels like it was kind of meant to be almost. It sounds corny, but. Um, yeah. jump here it's a single which traditionally I hate single jumps but this one is really neat but to me where you can see the fast guys versus the, the guys that are trying to go faster is they attack this a little bit more they got a, a little bit of uh, you know they'll add a little whip on the car to come off of this thing a little lower and they start pushing the envelope on how far they're gonna jump off of this to me I'm scared of this thing so I jump I try to jump onto the downside so I got, can turn into the chicane nice, because we talked about that being the entrance to your lap or the beginning to your lap. But, you know, to me, you can also see where the track has the grip to it. There's like a there's like a look to the where it has more traction versus another. So to me, when I'm over here, I'm thinking, I really like this section, but I don't want to jump too far, the car flat land, and then it wants to spin out. This is a two-wheel drive. And, you know, the guys that are a little more aggressive, they want to get a little more English on the car and set up for that corner. 
but you don't want to push it too far because you, you can feel that it's going to be loose too. Yeah, for sure. Um, you definitely can come up through here. You kind of push a little too hard, um, especially in two-wheel. You can definitely feel like the rear end kind of get light or kind of give out almost um, going into the chicane. And then, you know, we're, that's where we started, right? So that, that destroys the whole end of the lap. That kind of destroys uh, kind of starting the next lap. You kind of lose that, you're, you lost that last lap momentum going into the second lap or your third lap or you're leading the qualifier, or, you know, you kind of, you kind of lose that momentum if you kind of break a little bit of traction or you can kind of feel the car get um, a little bit light. Like Jason said, um, you know, obviously some people like they look at this and they just kind of like roll over it. Um, I would say we're definitely attacking a little bit harder. I think Brock attacks it the hardest. Um, I kind of land like right where Jason is, but that probably explains why I seat it third and not first. Um, but yeah, like I kind of land, you know, right here and I, I don't know, if, you know, obviously I'm in the same race as Brock, but there's been times where I, I kind of watch him and he's, he's almost like, like, you know, right almost where Dustin's foot was or a little bit before where you kind of shoot the car over and you kind of get it to kind of unsettle itself where it will kind of rotate. But, uh, you can almost cut the turn out if you do it right. You let on that outside tire and yeah. the car pivots really quick and you basically do the turn in the air almost. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you, you can definitely kind of cut, you can cut a lot of like turning movement motion if you do it right. It kind of, the rear end lands and it kind of already rotates and you're already mid you're already straight so you just pull the gas um uh, but for me i, I kind of you know i land a little bit here I'm, I'm pretty aggressive it's not like i'm not afraid of it um just kind of my lines that i've felt comfortable with but um like i said uh you know brock definitely uh, i think has the the most aggressive line through here um i feel like kind of dustin is kind of the same way he's definitely a little bit more like Kind of wants the car to land on a smooth transition right you know dustin's got a really uh kind of smooth uh connecting the dots kind of driving style that it looks really nice when you're watching him drive uh you know so but Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, that is kind of the preferred way when you look at something like this, that you want to keep the tires on the ground as much as possible, right? That's the most speed you're going to have. Um, and Cole is kind of theoretically doing it the way that um, most people will look at it and go, that's the way I'm going to do it. But, um, you know, like what Tyler said with the grip, the way it is, that it's almost feels kind of comfortable in some way to just over jump it and land kind of mid corner and and kind of be able to kind of have the car rotate on its own but um yeah i don't know if jason you have to anything me, i mean to me i look at this this part of the track and i, I want to get the car onto the part of two-wheel drive anyway where it looks like the traction is, is on the front if you're probably up here the car probably doesn't have a lot of grip and you're trying to dash it down here to the corner but to me you want to get to a part where the, the car has the most grip the track where people are landing the most because that's where the Just there, and then pretty soon you're back where we started, getting a nice blast through the chicane there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, it is important, like Jason said, to kind of land on the spot that you can, you know, where you can kind of see the coloration of the track that has the most grip, right? Uh, you know, 
that's going to give you the, the most comfort when you land on power setting up for the corner. Um, but there's honestly to this point on the jump, like there's so there's so many ways to kind of attack it. Uh, and honestly, whatever makes you kind of the most comfortable that you can go the fastest on, right? Like if you're if you're trying to overshoot this and you know drive like Brock Champlin uh, and you keep hitting the pipe, it's obviously not working. Right, so maybe you need to not seat first and drive like me and seat third, and just go a little bit safer and kind of land a little bit on the on the downslope side of it. But uh, yeah, I think there's there's many ways to do it, but I, I definitely think uh, landing kind of on the, the grip uh, side of, of the jump where you can kind of see where the, the color lightens out, like Jason said, is super important. So that's pretty much it. Yep. We did the full lap here. Um, thanks to Lee for, and yep. uh, Jacob for building this track here in Adrenaline. Thanks for coming out. Um, I guess we're going to do some practice. I mean, it'd be like 12 minutes of it. 12 minutes of practice. So, I mean, if somebody wants to practice so, laps in, As soon as we're it. done, thanks for joining us. And um, hopefully we can do this again soon. Thanks, Lee. Yep. Adrenaline. Thanks, guys. Already got it. Oh, there you go. Got to adjust my... All righty, guys. So that's. Hey, Jacob. I did. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, no Fend and Rifkin this weekend. We are all done for the day. We're going to get ourselves something to eat. And we are out for the night. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed night. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.